Hey, everybody. Welcome to the presentation. Today, I want to show you how your nonprofit organization can easily capture administrative costs or indirect from your federal grants. A cool new feature in the Uniform Guidance allows nonprofit organizations that have never had a negotiated indirect rate with the federal government to use the de minimis rate of 10% of your grant's modified total direct cost to recover indirect expenses. And we'll go through that math in just a little bit. If you've had a negotiated rate with the federal government in the past, you're not eligible to use the de minimis rate. You'll need to negotiate a new rate with your cognizant agency for indirect. Just as a recap, for those that might not be too familiar with indirect, the point of having a federal indirect rate is so the federal government can reimburse grantees for a portion of the administrative expenses incurred to implement a grant program. Now, direct, <clears throat> excuse me, that was unexpected. Direct expenses are ones that can be tied to a cost objective, as the feds like to call it. That is, expenses you can connect directly with a specific program you're operating, regardless of its funding source. So, for example, if you have a program serving the homeless, your direct expenses might include the salaries and benefits for the program manager, uh, a health educator, and a couple outreach workers, along with the various other costs necessary to operate the program, supplies, um, materials, cell phones, car mileage, uh, other types of travel, etc. Again, specifically for the program. Indirect expenses are those that cannot be tied to a specific cost objective. That is, they benefit more than one cost objective for a common or joint purpose. Typically items like the human resources or personnel department, the accounting department, salaries for the organization's top leadership, like the executive director, or CEO, the finance director, or CFO, people whose job titles and job functions suggest they perform work for the overall operation of the organization rather than just one specific program. All right, so how can you recover indirect costs from your federal grant using the de minimis method? Well, the math in your grant budgets is pretty straightforward, but there are a couple rules to follow because not every cost can be allowed in the calculation. And depending on your expenses, you might have to exclude some of them from the indirect calculation to reach the final number in your grant budget. If you've worked with uh, federal grants before, you know there are expense categories common to every federal budget, uh, personnel, fringe, travel, equipment, and so on. There's an additional line for construction if you happen to be working on a construction project. Now, let's take a look at which expenses you can include in your grant budgets that qualify for indirect using the de minimis option. There are several resources online I found that tried to explain this, but they, they got it wrong, just for, to put it in one word. Uh, they made the assumption you can simply take your total direct costs and multiply it by 10% to come up with the indirect amount. And that's 100% wrong. The de minimis option uses the modified total direct cost calculation, which has some pretty specific do's and don'ts. And so let's go through them. And here we are. Expenses that you can include in your indirect calculation using modified total direct costs are the direct salaries and wages for the people working on the grant, your, of course, the fringe benefits that go along with the salary, the salary costs, materials and supplies, services, travel, and this is important, uh, subawards and subcontracts up to the first 
$25,000. And just as a side note, back to back to personnel costs, um, you can now charge administrative or clerical personnel um, as direct cost to a grant, uh, assuming that their services are specifically for and integral to the grant project. Uh, their costs are included in the budget and have prior approval from the funding agency, and the costs are not recovered elsewhere as indirect. Uh, before the uniform guidance came out, uh, admin or clerical costs were typically considered exclusively indirect. So it's a nice change to to formalize this where you can now put um, you know admin costs or administrative personnel costs as direct in your grant budgets. Expenses that need to be excluded from the modified total direct cost calculation uh, <clears throat> excuse me for indirect are listed here. Everything from equipment, capital expenditures, uh, rental costs for real property and equipment, and then all the way down to the portion of subawards and subcontracts in excess of twenty-five thousand. Now, if you're wondering why these items are excluded, it's because they're generally high cost, and in some cases one-time in nature, and including them would artificially raise an organization's indirect rate and give the impression their admin costs are higher than they actually are. Now, here's an example of how to calculate the de minimis rate using modified total direct costs in your grant budget. Uh, the budget you submit with your proposal won't look like this. You know, it'll have it'll have the column for the expense categories, and it'll have the annual expense column. Uh, and in fact, it'll have like a year one, year two, year three, et cetera. You won't. I just added this final column on the right hand side where it says amount for indirect ten percent, just to uh, to show my work and to give you a better idea of what the process looks like. You can use, of course, whatever spreadsheet or format you'd like to figure out the numbers. And on the expense categories, for this example, I only included allowable, allowable costs uh, for this calculation. Uh, I didn't include, you know, anything that's not allowable like equipment or capital expenditures or, um, yeah, anything like that, just because, you know, since it's not allowable, you have your annual expense and the amount eligible for indirect would always be zero. So I thought I would just focus on allowable categories. And it's pretty straightforward. I mean, just like any other budget, you you work on your personnel fringe, your travel, all of your various uh, expense categories, come up with your totals, and then 10% of those numbers. Where you have to really pay attention is on the contractual line item, where you can only charge 10% on the first $25,000 of any contracts that you make using the grant funds. So if you hire a project evaluator for $30,000, or you, you hire uh, a website designer to create a, a website and a database for you at 75,000, the amount of indirect you can collect from each of those is going to be capped at 2,500, which is 10% of 25,000. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Captain Obvious. All right, and then of course, uh, communications materials, 10,000, you'll recover the full 10% of that. And just go through like I did on my right-hand column, total up all the amounts that are eligible for indirect. You come up with 31400 slide that over into the annual expense column, and you just add up your total direct cost plus the indirect, the de minimis indirect of 10%, 314 and you come up with your total cost for the project.
easy, easy, easy. Um, but there are a couple, couple final thoughts we should go through before wrapping this up. If you decide to use the de minimis rate, at some point you'll need to spend a few minutes deciding what is and what isn't an indirect cost within your organization if you haven't already done so. Because going forward, you'll need to keep a few things in mind. All expenses need to be treated consistently across funding sources, whether federal or non-federal. That is, if an expense in a similar situation is charged as direct to one source, it has to be charged directly to other sources. And same for indirect. You can't just decide an expense is indirect for federal grants, but direct for other grants. Similarly, you, you can't charge something as a direct cost to one federal grant when it's charged indirectly to your other federal grants. The charges, or I'm sorry, <clears throat> excuse me, costs may not be double charged you know, along the same lines. If you consider something an indirect cost, you can't get sneaky and also slip it into the direct cost category. And costs may not be inconsistently charged as both if you happen to have any expenses that are allocated to both direct and indirect. There's um, a lot of times uh, organizations will have some costs that can be legitimately, um, excuse me, allocated to both direct and indirect. Again, consistency is the key. Now, once you choose to use the de minimis rate, you have to use it on all of your federal grant awards until you decide to negotiate an indirect rate, but it can be used indefinitely before you take the plunge with a formal indirect cost rate proposal. So there's no, there's no like sense of urgency or any rush um, to work on that formal indirect cost rate proposal. You have this option that can be used indefinitely until you're ready. And I think that's all I have to say about this. Thank you very much for your time. If you have any questions, please email me through my website or reach out on social media. I'm here to help. If you found this useful, like it, give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment. I love the feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future presentations. Okay? Thanks. See you next time.